Welcome everyone, I am Dr. Rajesh Singh and in this video we will continue solving exercise of section 4.1 of the book Introduction to Real Analysis by Bartle and Sherbert. In the previous video I have solved question number 1 to 9. So in this video we will start, start with question number 10. So I have already done this question number 10b in one of my videos so I will mark question number 10 as done and it is similar to question number 11 so I will start with question number 11 and part a so I will do this question so this is limit x tends to 3 2x plus 3 upon 4x minus 9 equal to 3 so this is what we have to show so we will start with this and we have to use the definition of so we will start with question number 11 a part where we have to show limit x tends to 3, 2x plus 3 upon 4x minus 9 is equal to 3. So this is what we have to show. So let epsilon greater than 0 be any real number. So we have to show, to show there exists delta greater than 0 such that 0 less than x minus 3 less than delta should imply 2x plus 3 upon 4x minus 9 minus 3 to be less than epsilon. So for this we will try to express this in terms of x minus 3. So we will consider, so we will start with 2x plus 3 upon 4x minus 9 minus 3. So this we can write it as this is equal to 2x plus 3 minus 12x plus 27 upon 4x minus 9. So this is equal to when we simplify it what we will get minus 10x plus 30 upon 4x minus 9. So this is 10 times mod 4x minus 9 x minus 3. So now we have to find some k such that this is strictly less than k and then we will take delta equal to epsilon by k. So for this we have to choose a bound on x minus 3 but since a denominator can be 0 so we have to first Check the point at which the denominator is 0. So 4x minus 9 is equal to 0 implies x is equal to 9 by 4. So now I have to express this in terms of x minus 3. So this implies x minus 3 is equal to 9 by 4 minus 3. So this is equal to 12 so minus 3 by 4. So mod of x minus 3 should be this is equal to 3 by 4. So I, I have to take a bound smaller than this. So I will take 3 by 8. So let mod x minus 3 to be less than 3 by 8. This thing you can do in rough also. This is just a rough work for finding this bound. So instead of trying hit and trial method, we compute the points at which denominator is 0 and when we take the minimum of those points and we take our bound to be smaller than that. So I have taken bound to be 3 by 8. Otherwise what we do generally we take the bound to be half of this. So then we would, we would have taken 3 by 2 but that would have created problem. So now 3 by 8 will work for us. So this will imply minus 3 by 8 is less than x minus 3 and this is less than 3 by 8. Now adding 3 to all sides we get minus 3 by 8 so 24. 21 by 8 is strictly less than x is strictly less than but we get 27 by 8. So we will use this in the or, or we should express this in terms of x minus 3, 4x minus 9. We should express this in terms of 4x minus 9. 
so this implies 21 multiply by 4 both sides so we get so multiplying by 4 we get 21 by 2 is less than 4x is less than 27 by 2 now subtracting minus 9 so what we get 21 so this is 3 by 2 less than 4x minus 9 less than 9 by 2 so mod 4x minus 9 is greater than equal to 4x minus 9 and this is greater than 3 by 2 so we will use this this double star in our star so this is our star so we will use using double star in star we get what we get 2x plus 3 upon 4x minus 9 minus 3 is strictly less than 10 times 3 by 2 x minus 3 so this is equal to 20 by 3 mod x minus 3 so delta we have to take so let delta equal to okay, let me take the new page first so let delta equal to minimum of epsilon by 3 epsilon by 20 and 3 by 8 so for this choice of of delta it is clear that 0 less than mod x minus c less than delta should imply this is 3 so 3 less than delta this one is delta implies 2x plus 3 4x minus 9 minus 3 is less than epsilon hence limit x tends to 3 2x plus 3 upon 4x minus 9 is equal to 3 by definition of limit so this so now we have completed question number 11 let's pick up next question which is question number 12 so uh, what is the question number 12 show that limit following limits does not exist so what i will do so we have already solved similar questions so i will not solve this you can take xn to be equal to 1 by n so you will get fxn equal to n square which is unbounded so fxn does not converge so by divergence criteria of limit you can show that limit does not exist similarly in this case you will take xn equal to 1 by n square then you will get fxn equal to n which is again unbounded so you can say that the by using divergence criteria that limit does not exist so i will solve question number c and question number d in this video so we will solve question number C and question number D. So let us start with question number C. So question 12 C part what we have to show we have to show limit x tends to x tends to 0 x plus signal function of x does not exist this is what we have to show so we will have to use divergence criteria for this so we will have to find some sequence xn that converges to zero but the corresponding se sequence of images does not converge so let us start the proof so for this for this let xn equal to minus 1 by minus 1 to the power n upon n for all n belonging to n then obviously x 
gets in which converges to 0 now f of xn is equal to minus 1 by n to the power n plus minus 1 by n where fx is x plus sigma function of x so this x gives minus 1 to the power n upon n and the sigma function of this gives minus 1 to the power n so this if I take minus 1 to the power n common I will get 1 by n plus 1 so this is a oscillating sequence it is it is not exactly an oscillating sequence so what type of sequence is this you get so when you put n equal to 1 so you get minus 2 and then when you put n equal to 2 so it, you get 1 plus 1 by 2 then you get minus 1 by 3 plus 1 then 1 by 4 plus 1 so this way you are getting and so on so this sequence so this sequence has two limit points minus 1 and 1 and a sequence that has more than one limit points is not a convergent sequence because it has two subsequences if you take the subsequence of even terms and you say take the subsequence so the subsequence of odd terms converges to minus 1 and the subsequence of even terms converges to 1 so it has two limit points so this is not a convergent sequence or you can write it better you can write it like this so f of x to n converges to n equal to 1 to infinity so if i take this subsequence it converges to 1 and f of x to n plus 1 n equal to 1 to infinity this converges to minus 1 so since So since f of x in has two subsequences converging to different limits, so therefore f of x in is not convergent in R and this implies by divergence criteria for limits the limit x tends to 0 x plus sigma function of x is does not exist in R so this is the proof of question number 12 a part now let us take the question number 12 b part which was what was the question it was so question number 12 b part was we have to show limit x tends to 0 sin 1 by x square so we have done the question where we have taken so in one of my video we have done a similar question Show that limit x tends to 0 sin 1 by x square does not exist in R. So again what we will do we will take since sin t equal to 0 implies t is equal to t is equal to n pi n belonging to z and sin t equal to 1 implies t is equal to 2n pi plus pi by 2 n belonging to z so using this idea what we will construct we will construct two sequences xn and yn such that one corresponding corresponding image of one sequence is constant sequence 0 and corresponding sequence of one sequence is constant so what we will take we will take sin xn equal to 1 by root n pi and yn equal to 1 by root 2n pi plus pi by 2 for all n belonging to n so then for this choice of for clearly 
xn converges to 0 and yn converges to 0. So we have taken two sequences xn and yn which are converging to 0. Now we will show that their corresponding images does not converge to 0. So f of x is equal to sine 1 by x square. So I am assuming this let for all x belonging to r minus 0 because this is not defined at 0. So we have to ex exclude this point. We have assumed that f of x is equal to sine 1 by x square for all x belonging to r minus 0. Now, so f of x in is equal to what is f of x in sine f of x in is 1 by 1 root n pi whole square. So this is equal to sine n pi and this is 0 for all n belonging to n. So f of xn is a constant sequence converging. So this implies f of xn converges to 0. Now let us find f of yn. So f of f of yn is equal to sine 1 by 1 2 n pi plus pi by 2 square root and whole square. So this is nothing but sine 2 n pi plus pi by 2 and this is equal to 1 for all n belonging to n. So f of y n is a constant sequence 1 is a constant sequence and converges to 1. So by divergence criteria because we have found two sequences f of x n now xn converges to 0, yn converges to 0, so this should imply and but f of xn and f of xn converges to 0, f of yn converges to 1. So by divergence criteria, by sequential criteria, for limits f of x in does not converge in R. So by sequential criteria for limits since f of x in does not converge in R, so limit x tends to 0 sine 1 by x square does not exist in R. So we have shown solve, solve question number 12. Now let's move to the next question which is question number 13. Here we have to show we have been given that limit of f at 0 is L and a is any positive real number g is defined to be gx equal to f of ax we have to show that limit x tends to 0 gx is equal to l so this question is similar to this question this question question number 4 so question number 13 is similar to question number 4 let us solve this let us try to solve this okay so Okay, fine. So, question number 13. Given limit x tends to 0, fx is equal to L, A is greater than 0, and gx is equal to f of ax for all x. To show limit x tends to 0, g of x is equal to L. This, this we have to show. So let epsilon greater than 0 be any real number. So we have to find some delta such that 0 less than x minus 0 less than delta should imply gx minus L. So to show there exists delta greater than 0 such that 0 
less than x minus 0 less than delta should imply gx minus l less than epsilon. So this is what we have to show. So we will start with this. Since limit x tends to 0 fx is equal to l. So for above epsilon greater than 0 there exists delta star greater than 0 such that less than x minus 0 less than delta star implies fx minus l is less than epsilon so this one is star now let delta equal to delta star by a so this is the delta we will choose now, the, now for this and delta we will show that this condition is satisfied so consider 0 less than x minus 0 less than delta so this implies mod x is less than delta star and this implies 0 is less than mod x or I can write mod x is less than delta star and this I can write it as like this ax minus 0 less than delta star and for this a for this using star what we get f of ax minus l is less than epsilon using star because here ax is satisfying this condition ax distance of ax from 0 is less than delta star so f of ax minus l should be less than epsilon so using star we have got this and this implies gx minus l is less than epsilon hence limit x tends to 0 g of x is equal to l so this is the proof now let us go back to one more question question number 14 so we will take question number 14 so in question number 14 we have been given that limit x tends to c fx square is equal to l we have to show that if l is 0 then limit x tends to c fx is equal to 0 and we will show that if l is not equal to 0 then f may not have a limit at c so we have to give example in case of b part so let us solve this question yes question number 14 given limit x tends to c fx square is equal to L. Now A part says if L is equal to 0 show that limit x tends to C fx is equal to 0. So this is what we have to show. So consider so first we will show that A part so that epsilon greater than 0 be any real number so to show there exists delta greater than 0 such that 0 less than x minus c less than delta should imply fx minus 0 less than epsilon so this is what we have to show Now since we have been given that limit x tends to 0, fx square is equal to L and in this case L is equal to 0. So what we will do? Now since limit x tends to C, fx square is equal to L. So for above epsilon greater than 0, there exists delta star greater than 0 such that 0 less than x minus c less than delta star implies fx square minus 
uh, this L is given to be 0. So fx square minus 0 is less than epsilon square. So I am taking square here, epsilon square. So then take uh, delta equal to delta star. Then 0 less than x minus c less than delta implies 0 is less than x minus c less than delta star. And this implies fx square minus 0 is less than epsilon square using star and this implies mod fx square is less than epsilon square and since both are positive numbers mod fx is also positive epsilon is also positive so I can take square root and my inequality will be preserved. So mod fx is less than epsilon and this implies this is true only when both are positive because this is also greater than or equal to 0 and epsilon is also greater than 0 so that's why I can take root on both sides otherwise root it may be possible that for example if you take now for example 3 square is less than minus 5 square but minus 3 is greater than minus 5 so since both here are positive that's why we are able to take square root otherwise in general we cannot take square root inequality sometimes changes so f mod fx is less than epsilon and this implies fx minus 0 is less than epsilon so hence 0 less than x minus c less than delta implies fx minus 0 is less than epsilon so this implies limit x tends to c fx is equal to 0 so we have proved a part of question number question number 13 so now question number 14 so we have done a part of question number 14 now we will do the next part b part of question number 14 where we have to give an example give an example to show if L is not equal to 0 then F may not have limit at C. So now let Fx equal to 1 if X belongs to Q and minus 1 if x belongs to q complement so Dirichlet function so this is Dirichlet function so for this function fx square is 1 if x belongs to q and also 1 if x belongs to q complement so this is nothing but constant function one for all x belonging to R. So obviously for any C or we can take lim so for any C or we can take so clearly limit x tends to 0 fx square is equal to 1. Now we will show that limit x tends to 0 fx does not exist. So this is not equal to 0 so we will show that now we will show that limit x tends to 0 fx does not exist. So let now since 0 belongs to R, so 0 is a limit point of Q. Since R is the set of all limit points of Q. So there exists a sequence Xn in Q Xn not equal to 0 for all n such that Xn converges to 0. 
or in this case we can direct okay so this is fine so there exists the sequence xn in q says that xn is not equal to 0 for all n and xn converges to 0 because 0 is a limit point and whenever a point is a limit point then there exists if using this result if a belonging to a is a limit point of if a belonging to r is a limit point of a then there exists a sequence a n in a with a n not equal to a for all n such that a n converges to a so this is the result we are using in this so we have 0 is a limit point of q so there exists a sequence of rationals that converges to 0 now f of x n is equal to 1 for all n belonging to n because x n are rational so f of x n converges to 1 now let us take another sequence so we will take again as 0 belongs to r 0 is a limit point of q complement set of irrationals so there exists a sequence yn in q complement with yn not equal to 0 for all n such that yn converges to 0. Now f of yn is equal to minus 1 for all n belonging to n because yn are irrational so f of yn converges to minus 1. Thus we have found two sequences. We have two sequences xn converging to 0 and yn converging to 0 says that the corresponding sequences f of xn and f of yn converges to different limits. It follows that It follows from sequential criteria for limits. Sequential criteria for limits that limit x tends to 0 fx does not exist in R. In fact, we could have taken any point C in place of this fx. So this example is used at a lot of places so you must remember this example so we have completed question number 14 let us see what else is remaining so we have completed question number 14 now we are left with question number 15 16 and 17 which i will do in my next video which will be part 3 video to solutions to exercise 4.1 so this is all we have in this video thank you